Every Christian tends to try to prove themselves in one way or another. And if we're not careful, we'll get into this mode where we're trying to prove ourselves to God. I mean, in life, I feel like it's it's something within people that we try and prove ourselves to other people. We try and act like we're great and make people think that we're successful and skilled and all of these things. And I think that's just the, 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 the depravity in us and sometimes the insecurity in us that we want to be seen in a certain way. And the same thing can happen in our relationship with God where we're trying to prove ourselves to our Father. We're trying to prove ourselves uh, and say, hey, this is why you can use me. This is why I'm valuable. This is, you know, we, we do all these things and we can see that perfectly actually in chapter 18 of John. And we've been going through a chapter a day with these devotionals, but in 18, this is a pivotal chapter because What's happening is the betrayal and the arrest of Jesus. Now, Jesus is about to go get crucified, and he just gets betrayed by his disciple Judas. So he gets betrayed by one of his you know, closest people, and he told Peter, hey, Peter, you're going to deny me. And so all of this turmoil is happening, but in the midst of it, you know, we see a point of Peter that we can all fall into at times. And so it's so funny because in verse eight, it says, Jesus answered, I told you that I am he, so if you seek me, let these men go. So basically the, the Roman soldiers are coming to arrest Jesus. And it says, then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. So Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? Now this verse might just seem pretty straight up initially because it's like, oh yeah, you know, they're coming to arrest Jesus and, and Peter's trying to defend Jesus. But we have to realize that Peter is trying to prove something because guys, Jesus just told Peter, hey, you're going to deny me. You're going to deny me. And Peter's like, no, I'm not going to deny you, Jesus. There's no possible way. And so the first opportunity that comes up where he thinks, oh, this probably is what Jesus was talking about. He draws his sword and cuts off the, the servant's ear to prove himself and prove that he's worthy and prove that God is, ultimately Jesus is wrong. And if we're not careful, we'll get into that same mode where we're just trying to prove ourselves. And let me tell you in our life, like let's have the humility to realize that us as humans, we tend to mess things up. Like when we do things our own way, when we date who we want to date, when we take jobs that we want to take, when we live where we want to live, when we do what we want to do, we end up creating generally a life that is not fulfilling, that, that doesn't give us peace, that we're not happy with. But when we submit ourselves to the will of God and his plans for our life, then we find our, place, our lives in a place where we have peace and fulfillment and purpose. And so... When we try and take control over those things in our lives, it doesn't it doesn't go well. And that comes and it stems from a heart of wanting to prove yourself to God. You don't have to prove yourself to God. Okay, you don't. In fact, Jesus said, hey, Peter, you're going to deny me. And Jesus knew that this was going to happen. But then, spoiler alert, we're going to read later on, that Jesus comes back to Peter and reestablishes him. And it's a picture of grace. It's a picture of what's for our lives that God is not wrong, Jesus has never been wrong, will never be wrong, and we're wrong constantly, but what decision are you gonna make? Are, are we taking the stance of, no, I need to prove myself, and I need to work, and I need to strive, and I need to do all these things in order to prove to God that I'm worth something, or do we accept the fact that we are worth something because the word of God says we are. And in that, we submit to the will of God and we follow him humbly. And ultimately, lead he leads us into places that we never thought we would be. I, I golf uh, frequent, not frequently, more less frequently than I want to golf, but I do golf sometimes. And I went golfing with uh, my nephew and he's like a kid. I mean, we went with my brother-in-law but his, his kid was there and uh, he he's young, like he can't, he can barely hit the ball. But what's so funny is, you know, we go to the ball and he has his own ball that he's playing with and we throw it out there and he's like, oh, we're like, all right, all right, Judah, come on, hit the ball, let's go. And he like squares up to it, you know, and he looks and this is what he does. He goes, he goes up for his backswing and as his backswing is up, he starts looking around. And we're like staring at him. We're like, like he pauses mid-swing. And he makes sure that me and Jake are looking at him. Okay, you guys are looking at me? Okay, cool. And then he swings. And it completely messes up his swing and he misses it most of the time. But when he just swings normally, he hits, he makes 
contact way more. But it's so funny because we're like, dude, stop. Stop pausing at the top to make sure that people are watching. Stop. We're watching you. Okay? We're, we're intent. We care. We're watching you. Don't worry about it. But this is what he does. He pauses, looks around, and then once we make eye contact, he swings, and then he most likely misses it. And it's so funny because, you know, we are all children of God, and that's ten. That, that tends to be how we act in life. It's like instead of just being faithful to what God has called you to do in front of you and to just swing and trust and know that God is watching us and he's, he's on our side and he's cheering us on, what we tend to do is we tend to pause and we start looking around for affirmation. We start looking around for other people to say thing, good things about us. We look around to make sure that God actually cares about us. And, and in our paranoia, we take our eyes off of what actually matters, and that's actually just following through with what's in front of you. And so let me just encourage you, just like, just swing. Swing confidently in your life. Act as if God is right there cheering you on, because he is. And you don't need to prove yourself to God. You don't need to be in this place where you feel the need to constantly be proving your worth and value to God. He knows you're valuable. He made you that way. He made you valuable which is amazing. Okay, so know that you have value and stop trying to prove yourself to God. Now, we grow, we develop, we allow the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit to make us more in the image of Christ, but that's not in order to prove ourselves to God. It's a response of the grace that we've been given in our lives and saying, wow, thank you for this grace and thank you for this incredible call. I want to honor and glorify you in my life. How do I do that? I grow and I mature. And yes, I am more successful and I do achieve and all, but that's not the, the purpose of that is not to gain acceptance from the Father. The purpose of it is to glorify the Father. If you are doing works in your life to get acceptance, that is the wrong motive. If you're doing good things to glorify, that is the right motive. So today, we take that from verse 18, that you are valuable, that Jesus is never wrong, and he knows, and he knows the times where you mess up, but he comes back afterwards, and we can't begin to start to be and try and take control of everything in our lives. Meanwhile, we're making a disaster here, we're making a disaster there. We have to be faithful to God and understand that he is making a way and all we have to do is worry about what's in front of us and be confident that he's watching us and he's cheering us on in the way. So we got John 19 tomorrow. We're almost done with the book of John. Let me know what you've liked in the series so far and we'll see you next time.